if we look across um, our, our sort of global customer base in, in the communication sector today, I think we're starting to see um, AI move from more of a tactical uh, capability, which has been used over the last number of years, to a more strategic focus where they're looking to try to unify um, uh, its use across the, the life cycle and across processes. And I think up until this point, as I said, we've seen these tactical implementations where AI has been used for areas in the network for things like maybe traffic prediction to help optimize network design and investment through to fault predictions within the OSS environments. Uh, and even through to uh, the security uh, architectures, which we see in the networks with many of the firewall and the gateway vendors um, and enhancing their, their security posture um, around it. And that has led to actually some substantial benefits uh, for networks today, but it really hasn't unlocked, um, I would say, the true potential um, of AI in the network it, it itself. These have sort of been, as I said, tactical uh, where they can sort of leverage and understand what the capability can offer. I think what we're seeing now is really um, uh, a direction of travel where three interweaving capabilities or functions are starting to come together, which are, you know, I, I think are going to unlock it in a big way. You have analytics, you have automation, and of course you have AI, both predictive and now generative, this sort of superpower of three. And... You know, of course, analytics and insights have been in the network as a mainstay for network management for many years. Um, but I think with the growth of the in data volume and our growing ability now to harvest and access that data in real time or near real time um, allows us then to uh, utilize predictive AI and even generative AI uh, to, tr to trigger things like automation or self-optimization in the network where we haven't been able to do that in the past. And I think you're starting to see this move now that, that uh, AI combined with automation and combined with feedback loops for reinforcement and learning um, is going to start unlocking sort of the, the, these more complex network processes. And you're already seeing that today, both in the transport infrastructure, the transport networks, where you're getting a lot more smart routing, uh, where AI is making intelligent or intent-based driven decisions. You're starting to see it also in the radio networks as well where it's uh, looking to self-optimize in terms of energy efficiency, but also looking for spectral efficiency as well. So I think you're going to see more and more of that uh, movement towards, I would say, going from partial autonomy, uh, where you still have a, a human in the loop for governance, to gradually probably full autonomy towards a self-driving network, network. Now, that's obviously not going to happen overnight. It's probably not going to be into the next decade we see that, but I think we're on that on that journey at the moment. I think the other key thing is also generative AI. And I think that's something that to this point, a lot of people have looked at generative AI less from how the network operates more towards the, the business say support systems. But I think what we're seeing at the moment is that generative AI has a huge also pot potential in the, in the network itself. Um, whether it's uh, within sort of operation support systems in terms of uh, content creation and querying uh, to help uh, uh, solve issues, uh, its ability to support predictive models could enhance the accuracy uh, of anomaly detection and security threats. So I think there's a number of key areas there which we're seeing that uh, come into play and that sort of combination of um, uh, both traditional, what I would say, predictive AI and automation in terms of how the network performs and behaves, generative AI and how we manage uh, the network and how we support the, the operations and engineering teams, and then automation being sort of the, uh, I, I suppose, the key benefactor from it all, um, allowing the, to the, the decisions to be made. I think the one critical area though that we are seeing is about governance. Um, I think this is going to be the key uh, area of focus um, you know it, uh, us humans we struggle with black boxes that AI are we want to understand uh, whether or not uh, the decisions it's making um, are the right decisions um, and I think governance is going to be critical here and I think you're going to see the rise of digital twin technology uh, acting as a form of governance in our networks going forward where we're able to in parallel uh, be able to test out 
the AI inferences and optimizations which are being done on the network in a safe emulated or twin environment, uh, and then provide sort of real time uh, feedback loops, learnings and transparency uh, going forward to make sure that the, the decisions are the most optimal on the networks. And again, I think I think that's probably going to be a big focus area over the next number of years, how governance can come into the uh, into the networks today. Today, Sparent, we're, we're an industry leader in test automation insurance for the communications industry. Um, we're actively engaged uh, in unleashing the power of AI, both in areas such as our data centers and in our networks, and through also infrastructure and network services. Uh, and there's a number of critical areas we're working on to support the industry, whether that's in the data centers at the moment, uh, in terms of the design of the, the new backend uh, clusters, uh, helping develop the uh, interconnect fabric there, uh, being able to test and emulate the GPUs uh, in the networks, the telecom networks themselves, uh, as more and more uh, infrastructure uh, from suppliers is brought in with AI capabilities embedded in them, such as say security gateways and firewalls. We're helping test the efficacy of those uh, AI uh, uh, solutions to make sure they're actually delivering um, on the relevant uh, performance and you can trust uh, the solutions that you, you deliver. And we're also uh, delivering digital twin technologies today as well, which are uh, emulating or generating synthetic traffic, which is helping seed and feed uh, many of the AI models, uh, in addition to be able to test them in a safe and secure offline environment uh, to understand that the decision making they're making uh, is beneficial or relevant uh, for, for live operational use. So if you want to find out any more, um, please do go to sparrant.com um, and you can learn more about uh, how we're helping unleash the power of AI in, in networks today. Mm -hmm.